Hi right, lads, in this video I'm going to go through how to do 2017 section B question 4 from higher level. It tells the elevation and plan of three beauty products in mutual contact are shown. A 3D graphic of the cylindrical lipstick, spherical cream container and perfume bottle in the form of a square based pyramid is also shown. Part A tells us to draw the given elevation and plan showing all constructions. Part B show all points of contact and part C draw the development of the four sloping surfaces of the truncated square based pyramid A. So start this question, I'm going to start with drawing my elevation. So for the elevation, I'm going to start off with the square based pyramid first, the truncated one. So I'm going to start that off just here. So I'm going to take the central axis of it there. And the heights I have are 25, 30 and 30. So just mark the top of it there. So 25 and then I have two sets of 30 there and there. And that will give me my XY line for the base there. And I'm told the width is 65 in total. So what I'll actually do is, instead of trying to divide and get 32 and a half and being inaccurate, I'll just step out that 65 there and just take these heights across here instead. Just move this down and then the last little bit just for this part here. So 65 for the base and then I'll have to for the actual centre go in roughly 32 and a half there to get me the 65 for that top. The very top is going to be 22 in total, so I'm going to go 11 each side, and that will go down heavy there and there. That'll give me then from a truncated part of my pyramid, give me these two points in there each side, and connect them together to the edges. And there is my truncated pyramid there with the square top on it. So beside that, I'm going to have a sphere. And I'm told that the sphere is going to be 30 mil up from the ground. So it's going to be up 30. And we can see from the plan, it's a radius of 32. So what I need to do is to find that center point. I already have the height of my centre there. The height lines up 30, even though the sphere isn't touching the ground perfectly, it's actually chopped off. What I need to do is bisect this line here to find the centre point. So you would see it very similarly when you're drawing solids in contact for a cone and a sphere in contact. You bisect the angle in between them. And that'll give me that point there. And we know that the point of contact is going to be perpendicular to this edge here. So we take the like tangent edge. So we take our 90 degree edge there. And where it passes through the center, that's going to give me my point of contact here for this side. And then I can take my radius 32 then. And draw this as a result. So you can see it goes below the surface there, just enough for where it hits the ground there and there, and the rest of it is drawn in. Maybe the rest of the way there. So I'll just click that there to focus a bit better. So there we have it there, our baseline. And that just goes over the surface ever so slightly. <coughs> <coughs> After that then we have a sphere then of radius 16 is in contact with this sphere here. So what we know about it is if I just take a random line up here, the centre is going to be 16 mil off the ground. So if I measure 16 up, 
somewhere along this line here, it's going to be the centre point. So if it's 16 mil away from the ground and it's in contact with this sphere, that means the centre must be 16 mil further away from the circumference of this sphere here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on 16 to this one. And we want to find a point that is 16 mil away at all times from this circle here. So what we do is we just get our compass and we take that added radius together and we can find no matter what there's always this point here for example to here is always going to be 16 away from here to here 16 here to 16 etc and where they cross it's going to give me the center of my new sphere and we know that the point of contact for two spheres always lies along the center point so if I connect center to center there's my point of contact and I just take this down here that'll be where it touches off the ground I can now take that radius 16 and draw on my sphere there as a result. And now I have my new sphere drawn in and let's draw it in a bit heavier. And now that I have all that drawn there and I have my points of contact labeled up there and there. I can now start to draw my plan. So all my widths are going to be taken down. Center here and center here. And I'll just draw a line running across there. And what I'll do is I'll just extend these on a bit further here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go and take my central axis here, get my 32.5 and measure each side there and there to give me my square base. My square base is going to be there and I can draw in heavy my outline between the entry edges there. And at the moment I can't draw this in heavy yet because you can see if you look down, this part here is actually being covered by the sphere, so I don't know how far across yet I can draw it heavy before it comes dashed. So I'll start to draw in my circle then to see where that occurs. So you can see there, I have my radius and I follow my centre down, there it is there. There is my radius 32 for the outside one. I can then draw it in heavy here. Go dashed across there and finish off heavy there. And now just to complete my truncated pyramid, join my corners. To show my center line actually passes through there. And then I'm told once again that's 11 each side, but if I take down my edge here, I'm going to get there to there, and it gives me that outline. And also, I can draw in them corners there, and you can see that it's actually a circular top on it. So I take my radius from here, and I'm just drawing that circle there in the plan. I just draw a little bit heavier here, and there is that part now complete in the question. Now we're also told that in the center sphere there. To go down 15 is this line coming across here so that will also appear as a circle in plan almost if like that part was cut off so I extend my compass out because from the top I'm going to be able to see it so it's going to be heavy all the way around
and then I also have my bottom one here where it actually touches the ground and this one is going to be dashed because underneath you can't see it so I draw that in dashed all the way around there and then my last sphere my radius there that's going to be dashed because part of it is sitting underneath and then it goes heavy all the way around the rest of the way there and for our points of contact drop them down so remember points of contact lie along the centres of two circles join centre to centre take my point of contact down gives me a point of contact there and then we take to our central axis drop our point of contact down we get a point of contact there as well and that completes part A and B of the question there show my elevation and plan and show my points of contact apologies it's actually it's a cylinder it's not actually a sphere so I just need to rub this out apologies for that you can actually see it in the question so what that should be is a cylinder and the centre of the cylinder will occur along this line here and we're told it's 86 long in total so that should mean is it should be 43 each side so I just assumed it was actually just a sphere in contact when I looked at the elevation so always make sure to actually check the question properly I always assume just like I did there what it actually was so the widths will stay the same there take the string points out each side and what you'll now get is you get that line run to there it's being blocked at that point there so behind there is always going to be dashed so points of contact still lie along there at that point so put back in my point of contact and I can draw that there draw this heavy across here and now I also have a 60 degree angle that occurs where this line can be crossed there from the point on the circumference to that point there and just get my 60 degree and 60 degrees going the opposite way so that means it's going to be 30 going up this way so there's where I'd have my 60 degree angle in there so in between these two surfaces so obviously that's 60 there I just took my 30 because 60 plus 30 gives you the 90 degree angle as a result and that completes part A and B now so part C tells us draw the development of the four sloping surface of the truncated square base pyramid A so this pyramid here we're looking at so what we know so far is that this length here if we look at it in our elevation that's not a true length at present that length there is not a true length because it's tilted in the way however we always remember that if we have a horizontal line a plan it'll be a true length in elevation so that line will be a true length for the distance from here to here to give us the top so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this around as if it's sitting flat on the ground as if this was a hinge point here where it's tilting at an angle so this side here is sitting like that and what I'm going to do is tilt it around and so it's sitting flat on the ground and when we look down in our plan it's sitting flat on the ground we see a true shape so that will give us our true length there so if it was a cone this would be a true length but it's not it's a pyramid and because that lines at an angle it's not going to be true length so I'm going to rotate this around as if I flatten the side onto the ground so if I give hinges on the base I'm going to drop this point down take this across and from here to here is a true length 
So when I extend these out, each side, this would give me the true shape of one of my sides. So that there would be a true shape on my side after rotating this around. I rotate that around to the ground, it's like a hinge point here. I rotate it around like that, it's flat on the ground. And I remember that the only reason we can prove that is a horizontal line always appears as a true length and elevation. So the distance from here to here is that length. We know that that line there is representing that edge, but we can't actually get the true length because it tilts in an angle here and tilts in an angle here. So that will give us our true shape there of that. Then in order to actually draw the development then of that of them, we're going to be using the exact same method as we would with a cylinder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my extreme edges here as if it was a cylinder, and we get our center point up there. But just extend that in. We get our center point there. So imagine it's a cone. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that. That's going to be our true length. We're going to take a point out here. It's going to be my center. I'm just going to swing an arc like that there. And we're going to take all four of our sides. So I'm just going to draw this here. And the length of each of our sides, so just like when you would have done a cone, you would have 12 equal parts, we actually have all of our edges all there and there. So you can step out one, two, three, and then I won't have enough there, so I need to just extend this around on this side here. And I'm just going to go slightly into this question here. And that's our fourth one there. So it's actually tight enough for space on this question. And then I connect those together. They give us our four bases there for each of our sides of the square base pyramid. And then we take our actual distance here. So we know that's the true length in between them. There we go to our true shape here. So we're basically drawing this four times all the way around. So if I take this distance from here, it'll give me this point, and because it's the same all the way around, it gives me this point, this point, this point, and this point. And what I can do now is connect those together to give me my top surface. So the outlines are always in heavy. And then our fold lines occur in between them. So all of our fold lines in there. And that will complete part C of the question there. So the development of all four of our sides. So the exact same method as you would do with a cone. You step out your four sides here along it. And then you use your true length here to get these lengths in between. And that then completes the actual question for part A, B and C. So hope that video helps with that question.